Hey everyone, it's Joel with you here, EV Geek Studios, and I'm sitting in my wife's 2020 Kia EV9, and we are at a Tesla supercharger station here in Conway, Arkansas, because I'm getting ready to do a 10 to 80% charge at this Tesla supercharging station. So why is this important? Because if you're out taking a long road trip, this is the kind of charge stop you would make. So before we get started, before we actually plug in and get started, uh, let's talk about some logistics of this, uh, of charging on the Tesla network. So those of you who are not familiar with EV9s, they are 800 volt architecture. This V, this V, V3 stations, excuse me, and other stations like this that are V3 Tesla are only really set up for 400 volt architecture. So what does that mean? Um, that means you're not going to get that, that huge charge you would get, for example, on a, um, Electrify America 350 kilowatt station. I plug in that car in that station at an EA, I'm going to probably just automatically ramp up to over 200 kilowatts. Uh, because of the voltage issues with, and the voltage systems with the Tesla superchargers and these 800 volt architecture cars for Kia, I'm not going to see that. The most I'm going to see is probably 120 to 125 kilowatts. That's what's available on the newer models here of the, or like on the 2026. Um, but the nice thing is it's going to, it should, I should, I should say, I've never, I haven't done this before. It should hold that charge almost to 80%. So what you should see with this charge curve is it gets up to 120 kilowatts in 125 kilowatts and just stays there until 80%. So um, like I said, the, the, these Tesla superchargers are primar primarily designed for 400 volt vehicles. That's what Teslas are. While this Kia EV9 uses the 800 volt architecture. So when a 400 volt charger connects uh, to an 800 volt car, the car's onboard converter, must step up the voltage, which significantly slows the process and limits the power transfer. So this whole uh, voltage conversion kind of gets bottlenecked, meaning the EV9's maximum charge rate, uh, which is around 215 kilowatts, like I said, it's not reached at these 400 volt systems, uh, these V3. Instead, uh, observed charging speeds are gonna be much lower, probably around 100 to 125 kilowatts. So that's the backstory on that. Let's get everything set up. Let's get plugged in. Let me get my Tesla app open so we can see this, so we can plug in and get started. All right, we're almost ready to plug in and charge. As you can see, before I turn the car off, kind of want to give you the stats. As you can see, we are at 10%. We're at the Tesla Conway Arkansas charger here. I'm going to turn off. I got my Tesla app ready. As you can see, uh, we are available here. I have to tell you what, what stall I'm going to be at, what post. Uh, so let's uh, pop out here and get started. So it's first off, let's turn the car off. Let's pop out. Say hi to the family down there. Say hi, family. All right, so we're going to pop back over here. Looks like we are going to be at stall. 3C. So let me put on here 3C. If you can see it that well, probably can. It's very sunny out. 3C. I'm going to hit start charging. All right, it says attach adapter and plug in. Let's do that. All right, we attached the adapter and plugged in. Let's head back inside so we don't have any glare. All right, as you can see, it says initializing charge. All right, we are plugged in. As you can see, 10%. Right now we're at six kilowatts. I did hit the battery recondition. So we all see how long this takes to get up and running. All right. Already at 11%, look at that. We were just at 10%. Looks like it's saying 38 minutes to 80%. So as you can see, we are ramping up. I will also show these stats in the charger here. So let me go to my phone and start recording. All right, we are now recording on the phone. All right, so as you can see, 
progress. 86 kilowatts already, so we're still ramping up. Up to 106 kilowatts. 119. And we're holding steady at 119. Just like I said, we should see a peak rate somewhere between 120 and 125 kilowatts. And as you can see, we have already ramped up to that. It took about 2%. It actually took about a little less than two minutes to ramp up to what almost will be our, our full you know, charge rate that we're going to get during this whole entire charging session. So what we're going to do is we're going to check back in at kind of like 10% increments to kind of show you what's going on and how much we have charged. So see you in a bit. All right, we are back 20% into the charge. Let's take a look at the app, see what's going on. As you can see, 20% charging progress. We are at about $4, still hitting that 120 kilowatts. Like I said, we're going to see that the whole way through. That's what we should see. And we've already delivered almost a uh, 10 kilowatt hour in just six minutes. So um, this is what we were expecting. The car said 38 minutes, so that may be what it is, but we'll check in here in a bit to see what our next stat shows us. All right, checking back here in with you. And actually this charging station has just gotten really busy, which is kind of odd because it's usually not that busy of a site. So let's, uh, let's get a screen recording popped up here of, the, uh, of my phone. Let's see where we're at. And here we are. All right, so as you can see, we are now at 35% state of charge. Uh, we've uh, still around that 119 kilowatt, 120 kilowatt charge rate. We've added 24 kilowatt hour, which is pretty impressive, in 13 minutes and 17 seconds. Um, let's talk a little bit about the charging station here in, in Conway. So ch the charging infrastructure has gotten a little better here in Arkansas. It's not as good as other southern states. For example, I live in Little Rock, and this is the closest, basically, V3 charging st station that I have near my house. Now, we have an older one in Little Rock, but um, yeah, that's a V1, and this is the closest one that we have. So um, it kind of stinks to do stuff like this. I got to drive 35 minutes to this location to do these little charge tests. We do have one opening up here in Little Rock, in North Little Rock, any day now to crack a barrel. I think it's like an 18 stall station, which we are totally excited about, so we don't have to make these long trips. But it's a really nice exit. Uh, there's a five guys here. There's a walk-ons. It's right off the interstate. Like I said, you have to go through these two weird roundabouts uh, to get here. But it's a really nice location. It's kind of towards the back of a parking lot where no one parks. And like I said, you can walk uh, to eat. You can go to Rock and Roll Sushi, Five Guys, walk-ons. All this is within walking distance if you're going to be here in a car like this for possibly 25, 30 minutes because, like I said, you're not going to get those huge charge speeds of 210 kilowatts. You're going to get those 119, 120 kilowatts. That's all you're probably going to see. That's all you're definitely going to see at these uh, Tesla charger stations on these 800-volt uh, architecture cars from uh, Kian Hyundai. So we'll check back, check back in around 50% uh, and see where we're at. All right, we're back. Let's check the app. Just crossed 50% state of charge. Looks like still holding at 120 kilowatts. Honestly, that has not changed one bit. It fluctuates between 119 to 121. It has not budged a bit off that, which is, like I said, one of the perks of charging your Kia at a Tesla supercharger station because you're going to hold that state of charge, hopefully, from 10% to 80%. Uh, as you can see, we also have delivered about almost... 40 kilowatt hour and just over 20 minutes. So we'll check back in around 70 to 75%. And then we'll give you final stats and a wrap up this 10 to 80% charge at a Tesla supercharger with a 2026 Kia EV9. All right, checking back in. Looks like charging progress. 68% state of charge. Uh, we're up to 121 kilowatts so uh we're, we're peaking uh, just a little up a little bit on that charge rate over look at that over 57 kilowatt hour delivered in looks like right now under 30 minutes now just bumped up to 122 so it looks like we're getting a just a tick a little faster here in this last couple maybe 10 15 percent so uh our next check-in with you will be when this entire charge session is done and we'll check final stats i kind of give you my final thoughts so uh, see you here in about, I guess, 10 minutes.
All right, we are back. So I had to take the camera out of the window and put it on my selfie stick because it got overheated. That's what happens with these iPhones sitting in the sun and recording. So final stats looking at it. Um, reached our 80% state of charge. Um, we added almost 70 kilowatt hour of power during that charge session. If you look at the app here, at 80%, it was still 119 kilowatts that was being sent to that battery. That That's amazing. It took 35 minutes. So if you look at the overall charging session, I would say pros and cons. Uh, let's start with pros. So pros, first off, Tesla superchargers are everywhere. They're they're easy to find. Um, there's, there's good infrastructure out there for Tesla superchargers. Um, so they're easy to get to. The nice thing about this car, it's a 2026. It has the NACS. It already has the NAX adapter, uh, the NAX port on it. So no need to carry adapters unless I need a CCS adapter. Um, so that's some of the pros. And it's going to hold that steady charge curve the whole way throughout. So it's it's very predictable on what the car is going to charge at. So cons. So if I were to take this same car and drive a little bit farther down the road to the EA station down there, 10, 80% there would be about 24 minutes. So I'd save about 10 minutes charging at an EA station. It would most likely cost me a little more. So if cost is an issue, um, there is a little difference there in cost. I believe pricing here was, I think, maybe 39 cents because I didn't have the the Tesla plan as compared to a little bit cheaper, it would be without the Tesla plan. Um, and also, um, the thing that bothers me about EA is they're still somewhat unreliable. For example, Sebastian took a trip to Memphis about a week or two ago and the EA station in Brinkley was down. So that's something else you need to consider as well. Me, personally, I would probably, and Sebastian will probably disagree with me, I would probably just charge at the Tesla supercharger knowing that I'm getting reliability. I can pretty much predict what my charge speed and my charge curve is going to be. And um, I don't have to worry about, for me, messing around with adapters. So for Sebastian, he may choose otherwise because his Ionic 5 is still CCS. So he'd have to go the adapter the other way with charging at Tesla. But what I like is that this gives you another option. I'm glad that these cars, that the, the, that these non-Tesla cars now have access to the Tesla supercharger stations. Um, so yeah. So thank you for joining us on our 10 to 80% charging at the Tesla Supercharger here in Conway, Arkansas. And we will see you again on our EV Geek Studio video. So long, everyone.